Good morning everyone. My name is Vijay Gupta and you are watching Biology Classes. So, welcome to all of you in this class of Biology. As we know that currently I am making my videos related to the human skeletal system. This is the third lecture in which I am going to start a new topic that is the vertebral column or the backbone. In my first lecture, as I described about the different bones of the body and I, I, and I gave an introduction related to the human skeletal system. In my second lecture, as I told you about the human skull, different types of cranial bones and different types of facial bones. But in this lecture, I will describe about the vertebral column. Vertebral column or the backbone, it is situated at the dorsal side of our body and this vertebral column consists of total 26 bones and these bones are known as vertebrae. These vertebrae can be divided into five regions which are as uh, uh, which are given in the diagram as you can see there these five regions are the first region is known as cervical vertebrae which forms the neck area the second one is known as thoracic vertebrae which form our thorax the next one is the lumbar vertebrae which forms the belly the next one is sacrum vertebrae or the sacral vertebrae which forms the hip region and the last one is coccyx or the tail vertebrae which form the tail region. It is actually in the form of vestigial organ in our body. So now what about the calculation, what about the division? The bones which are present in the vertebral column are termed as vertebrae. So the, there are total 26 vertebrae in adult while 33 vertebrae in, uh, in a child. As, uh, and you can say that there are total 26 bones but 33 vertebrae. Now what is the meaning of this? Actually the sacrum, this bone, is uh, consists, uh, it is a fused bone actually and if you count that then uh, it, is, uh, it is one, one bone but it consists of total 5 vertebrae which are fused together and to form a single bone. So the calculation of sacrum is 5. So vertebrae are 5 but bone is 1. In the same way, the coccyx consists of total 4 vertebrae in fused form. So, the bone is single. These are the fused 4 vertebrae, but the vertebrae are 4. So, the number of vertebrae is 33. Total 33 vertebrae in our vertebral column. But if we count about the bones, so the bones are 26 bones. Now, I will clear, clear uh, it. So, first of all, I will tell you about the cervical vertebrae. Now, what about the cervical vertebrae? The vertebrae which forms the neck region, the vertebrae which form our neck region are known as the cervical vertebrae. So, as you can see, these seven vertebrae, cervical vertebrae are total seven in number. So, these seven vertebrae, which I made with green color, so these vertebrae are known as the cervical vertebrae and they are seven in number. First one is C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6 and C7. So the name of these vertebrae are C1 to C7 and these 7 vertebrae form our neck region and known as the cervical vertebrae. As you can see in this diagram, this portion forms the neck and these are the cervical vertebrae. So there are total 7 cervical vertebrae. The first vertebrae is also known as atlas vertebrae which attach with our skull. So the movement of skull is due to the presence of atlas vertebrae. So the first vertebrae of vertebral column is also known as atlas or the C1 vertebrae. Just below the atlas, another vertebrae named axis. So remember both the names. The C1 is also known as atlas and C2 is also known as axis. Both are the cervical vertebrae. Now this curve which is present in the cervical region is known as cervical curvature. As you can see, it is not the straight vertebral column. It is slightly S-shaped. So due to S-shaped, there are some curves are there. This curve, this curve, this curve. So these curves are named. This curve is known as cervical curvature. Another curve which is present in the thoracic region is known as thoracic curvature. The next one which is present in the lumbar uh, region, that is known as lumbar curvature. So these are the curves which are present in the vertebral column. Now, so, as I told you about the cervical vertebrae, these are seven in number. Next vertebrae are known as thoracic vertebrae, which forms the thorax. So, they are 12 in numbers. T1, T2, T3, 2, T12. So, there are total thoracic vertebrae, number of thoracic vertebrae are 12. One important thing, our thorax consists of ribs. As you can see in this diagram, these are the ribs. 
and these ribs are attached at the back with these vertebrae so all the 12 ribs attached to the vertebral column in this region the thoracic vertebrae so ribs are attached to the thoracic vertebrae which forms the human thorax or the ribs cage so there are total 7 sorry 12 thoracic vertebrae and the curve which forms is known as thoracic curvature now the next vertebrae are lumbar vertebrae these are the largest vertebrae and very important in function so these five vertebrae are known as lumbar vertebrae or the lumbar region these named are l1 l2 l3 l4 and l5 the curve which is present in the lumbar region is known as lumbar curvature and finally this bone it is actually a fused uh, bone so it is known as sacrum the sacrum consists of total five vertebrae and a fused bone so the vertebrae which are present in the sacrum are five it can be clearly visible in child while in adult these vertebrae are fused together and to form a single bone so the sacrum consists of five and total fused bone is one now the next is the last one is coccyx or the tail vertebrae it is four in number and all the four vertebrae are fused together and to form a single bone that is called as coccyx or the tail vertebrae so it was the division of different vertebrae in our vertebral column i think everything is very clear to you learn the number of these vertebrae cervical 7 thoracic 12 lumbar 5 sacrum 1 coccyx 1 so the bones are 26 while the vertebrae are 33 so it was about the structure of our vertebral column now i will tell you about the functions of vertebral column what about the functions of vertebral column so it is a very important <coughs> part of our axial skeleton the first function is it provides the protection to the spinal cord now, what is the spinal cord our brain consists of a rod like structure which originates from the back side of the bone and enters into the trunk region and it enters inside the vertebral column actually these vertebrae are hollow from inside so the vertebral column in, sorry so the spinal cord insert in, inside the but in, inside these vertebrae and it is moves towards downwards so the spinal cord is present inside the vertebral column okay so you can say the vertebral column provides protection to the spinal cord and spinal cord is a part of our nervous system i will describe spinal cord in the chapter nervous system so the vertebral column provide protection to the spinal cord so the next is it supports the head as i described before that our vertebral column the atlas cons, uh, is attached with the skull so the vertebral column supports the head without the vertebral column our head cannot move freely now next is it allows flexion flexion means to bend of the back and the body if our body needs to bend or need, uh, need to move anywhere so it helps in the movement in the for, for the bending the vertebral column helps to our body now the next is it also serve a point of attachment for ribs as i described before that all the ribs are attached to the vertebral column with the uh, thoracic region so it also serve as a point of attachment for the ribs so it was all about vertebral column about the number of vertebrae about the functions of vertebral column and i think all things are very clear to you still if you want to any question you may ask in the comment section thanks for watching have a good day